welcome to Radner 411. My name is Jim Doling and I'll be your host. In each episode of Radner 411, you will get updates from every department to help keep you informed on all that is happening in your township. First up is Bill White of the Finance Department, who explains to us about the 2011 sewer rent bills, the budget, and auditing. Hello and thank you. Uh, here's what's going on in the Finance Department for April 2011. The, the topic I really want to focus on this month, um, even though there are a lot of different things going on uh, that I'll touch on at the end of this brief segment, but the one item I wanted to touch on now because it'll be uh, going, the bills will be going out this month uh, and are due at the end of this month are the 2011 sewer rent bills. Um, if you've, if you've been a resident for longer than a year, you're, you're probably well aware of the fact that uh, every April, uh, we try to send them out uh, late March so they arrive in early April because the due date is April 30th, uh, is the, the sewer rent bills. And what those represent are each homeowner's share of the sanitary sewer, uh, sewer line maintenance and repair and the infrastructure upkeep uh, that the township is responsible for. Uh, in addition, uh, and actually a majority of the, the money that is collected from those sewer rents is used to pay for Radner's share of the RHM Sewer Authority, which is where the sanitary water goes uh, as it exits the township from our pipes. So we're part of a larger sanitary sewer uh, consortium, and most of the money we collect from the sewer rents goes to pay our share of that. Um, so. The, the, what the sewer bill is based on uh, is what each homeowner's actual water use was from the prior year. So we're sending out bills in April of 2011. That's going to be based on uh, what Aqua reports back to the township on how much water was used uh, for each of your meters, uh, if you have multiple meters or, or however you're set up. So. Um, that's how the bill's generated. Uh, the Board of Commissioners reviews. Uh, the usage information uh, takes that uh, and takes a look at uh, the staff that the township has in our public works department that actually goes out and maintains, cleans, uh, and keeps the sewer system up and running, the different pumping stations, making sure those are working properly, uh, there, as well as identifying and actually improving old sanitary lines um, to make sure that the entire system is working properly. So they look at the expenditure amounts on an annual basis. Um, and compare the usage and come up with a rate. Uh, for 2011, the rate is $5.57, and that is per 1,000 gallons of water used in 2010. So uh, that's what the bill's based on. Uh, the rate uh, increased from uh, 2010 to 2011 slightly, uh, roughly 3%. Um, and again, the money, that money uh, is accounted for entirely uh, separate of general fund dollars. Those dollars are deposited into a special sewer fund. The expenditures that they are used for are uh, all separate sewer specific expenditures uh, so that uh, it keeps the sewer rent proceeds uh, separate from say general tax proceeds, other types of revenue uh, that departments generate, uh, for example rec programming, rec programming or building code permitting, those types of things. That, that all goes in the general fund, so we keep the sewer rent completely separate into its own fund, and that is for accountability purposes. It helps with transparency, uh, making it, so it's easy to demonstrate that these are indeed a, a special bill with a very special purpose, and it's being used for that purpose. Uh, it is part of the township's annual audit. Uh, our auditors uh, are actually here right now, uh, looking at all of our books, but they'll take special care to look at the sanitary sewer fund and make sure that the monies generated from the sewer rent bills are being used for that special purpose. So that is a very brief highlight of the sanitary sewer bills that, that are going out here in April. Uh, the finance department prints, mails, and collect, prints and mails the bills and then also collects payments. So if you have any questions, please uh, contact the finance department. We'll be happy to get those answered. There are other credits uh, that you can apply for. If you've got a second meter which has um, water that doesn't actually end up going through the sanitary pipes, uh, you can get a credit. 
Um, but I would encourage you, if, if you've got those circumstances, to give us a call and, or go to the, the township website and uh, at www.radner.com and, and check out uh, what those credits might be. Uh, or if you just have questions, please give us a call. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, other things going on in finance right now, um, and we continue to work and try to improve the different types of reporting information, uh, not only internally, which has basically been the focus since I, I got here last summer, uh, and is trying to um, improve the, the information that departments have. Uh, it's, it's taken a little longer, admittedly, than I thought it would be, uh, but the access to information has been a little difficult. Uh, so we are improving the internal reporting for departments now, trying to get the department heads the information they need to know how their departments are operating uh, from a financial perspective. We're also putting together uh, information for the board uh, in terms of um, you know, benchmarks or, or progress points in terms of how we're doing as the year goes along with some of our major revenue items, uh, how we're doing uh, on aggregate on the expenditure side, uh, and then also taking specific pieces of the budget, pulling them out, and looking at them individually. So we continue to work on putting that information together, um, and we'll continue. This will be an ongoing process. It's not something that we're looking to wrap up and, and have perfected by the end of uh, spring or summer, but um, that has been the primary focus for the last several months now. Uh, in addition to that, there's a couple other major projects going on in the township that um, if you're interested, always uh, the website's a great source to stay up to date with those kind of things uh, or watch or attend a board meeting where those items are being discussed. Um, and as mentioned, uh, the auditors uh, are here. Uh, they are auditing our 2010 books. Uh, we are also compiling our financial statements um, and converting them to generally accepted accounting principles. So that takes a little bit of time, um, getting all the journal entries posted, identifying the appropriate receivables, payables, and other assets and liabilities that need to be reported on our balance sheet. So um, that's what we're doing right now. That's what's going on in finance this month. As always, if you have any questions, uh, questions, comments, concerns, please uh, email, call, uh, or go to the website for more information. Uh, and I will see you again next month. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Next, we have Leah McVeigh and Tammy Cohen of the Parks and Recreation Department who will tell you about all the wonderful spring activities that are available. Hi, I'm Leah McVeigh in the Parks and Recreation Department. The snow is finally melting and it's time to start thinking about your spring outdoor recreation activities. Here at the Park and Rec Department, we are offering signups currently going on for programs for ages 3 to adult. Our, for our preschoolers, we have programs for play ball, five-star sports adventures, impact sports programs, UK Elite and World Cup Junior Soccer programs, along with several tennis programs. For our youth, we are offering a new spring theater program, an all-star impact sports program, and of course, golf and tennis lessons. Teens and adults can tune up their golf and tennis with lessons this spring. Another big hit is our babysitter's training course. For anyone interested, the Fenimore Woods Picnic Pavilion is available for rent from the Parks and Recreation Department. Please contact our office at 610-688-5600, extension 136, to make your reservation. We reserve the Fenimore Picnic Shelter for picnics, family reunions, birthday parties, and so on, as, as well as our other picnic areas throughout Radnor Township. Please give us a call or check out all of our information on the website at www.radner.com. Click under Parks and Recreation, Programs and Excursions, and you will be set for your spring activities, your picnic shelter. And don't forget, we're also running a trip to New York City on May 7th. For anyone who wants to go the day before Mother's Day, it's a certainly a treat for your mom. Have a nice day. Thanks, Leah. Hi, I'm Tammy Cohen with the Radnor Township Parks and Recreation Department. As Leah had mentioned, we have a wide variety of different spring events available that will appeal to a wide variety of interests and a wide variety of ages. So please call us if you'd like to learn anything more about some of the recreational programs that Leah had mentioned, or if you need information on how to register. Please don't hesitate to check out the website at www.radnor.com. Our information is always changing and we're always uploading new information and new programs and new events and information. 
This spring, we're planning to have our first annual egg hunt over at Radnor Activity Center at Sulpizio Gymnasium on the field. This event is scheduled for Saturday, April 10th. We also have an orienteering clinic that's going to be scheduled for Saturday, April 16th at the Willow Skunk Hollow. We're also planning for the middle of March, mid to late March, a three-on-three -three basketball tournament to follow up to the Radnor Youth Basketball Program. This tournament will also segue into a great camp that we have that's going to be taking place during spring break week, which is the, the week of April 18th. This is a very exciting new event that we would like to showcase. In addition, the three-on-three -three tournament is free. Yes, free. Please call us for more information on that one. We also have our annual Arbor Day celebration that's going to be taking place tentatively on Tuesday, April 26th. It's going to be a combined effort between members of Radnor Township, the Radnor Conservancy, and the Radnor Cub Scouts. The Youth Trout Derby is also going to be coming up in April and scheduled for Saturday, April 29th and Sunday, May 1st. This takes place at Sawmill Park. The Radnor Conservancy is also planning a 5K trail run and fun walk that will be starting from the Radnor the Radnor uh, Willows Cottage uh, on, sat on Sunday, June 5th. Uh, we're still working out a lot of the details for this one, um, but we are planning that event as well. So if anything you've heard today sounds interesting, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We can provide you with more information, tell you how to register, and explain all the dates and times and details. For those of you who are also wondering what's going on this summer, we do have a wide variety of programs and activities scheduled uh, that are coming together for the summer 2011. Uh, for some of that information, if you're looking for dates and times on camps, uh, sports camps, theater camps, science camps, uh, any type of specialty camps that you may have seen in the past that you're interested in doing again or learning more information on, please don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we anticipate we're going to open registration early to mid-May, so please call us for more information on that. And as I mentioned before, always check the website. We're constantly updating information and adding new dates and new times and new programs that come together. So please don't hesitate to check the website and please don't hesitate to call 610-688-5600. And we'll look forward to seeing you this spring. Thanks, Lee and Tammy. And now we will hear from Steve G. and Cristoforo of the Information Technology Department who explains to us about all the different computer equipment used in the township. Hello again, everyone. I'm Steve G. and Cristoforo from the Information Technology Department. For this month's segment, we're going to be taking you through the different types of computer equipment that are used daily uh, within Radnor Township. We're going to start off with the small to the very large, so here we go. First piece of equipment I want to show you is our handheld computers. Uh, these are primarily used by the Park and Enforcement Division here at Radnor Township. Um, these are regular handheld computers. They go out and they actually uh, write the parking tickets on here, print the parking tickets on a portable printer, and then at the end of the day they come back and sync this up with our police records management package. Uh, it allows for a much more efficient, much more accurate operation uh, with regards to processing parking tickets. And now we're going to show you the piece of equipment that's used by police officers every day in the police car. Okay, the next piece of equipment that we use here in the township is our mobile data computers, or what we call MDCs. It has a couple of unique features. It's not like a regular laptop. It has a ruggedized uh, chassis. It has a rubber keyboard pad so that they can't spill anything into the keyboard. And it also has a touch screen. Although these are owned and maintained by Delaware County, we do some of the minor maintenance here at the township. This device is connected to what's called a VRM or vehicle radio modem, which is mounted in the trunk of the police car. And that radio modem connects the officer's police car to the Delaware County Emergency Communication Center. The officer receives his calls on this mobile data computer. He can also access various databases, such as they can run a tag, he can run a driver's license, he can say someone is wanted or missing. Directly by inputting the information in here, it goes wirelessly to the 911 center and then back to his terminal. Okay? Uh, it's a real, real important tool that the officer uses every day to ensure that uh, they do, do the best possible job using the best possible equipment. All right, there are many types of uh, information systems here at the township used by the different departments on a daily basis. Community development, 
the finance department, the police department, all use unique databases, unique to their departments to be able to provide uh, good quality service. To do that, uh, there's two basic types of machines that we use here. There is a desktop workstation and also a server. Let's take a look at a desktop workstation first. Uh, this is a standard desktop workstation. Okay, it looks pretty much like a computer that you would have in your house. Uh, one unique thing about Radner here is we actually uh, do all of the maintenance ourselves on the PCs. We build them, we load them. Uh, we are basically self-sufficient. Uh, we maintain the printers, we maintain the monitors, and all the peripheral equipment that's used on a daily basis. Uh, we have approximately 80 to 90 of these PCs running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So as you can uh, imagine, a lot of parts do wear out, uh, fans, uh, hard drives, different uh, interface card, memory, motherboards. Uh, we need to keep these supplies in stock so we can get a quick turnaround so that we can get that employee back up and working in a timely manner. Uh, now we're going to move on to the server uh, portion of our program. Uh, the servers actually house all of the data that's accessed by the workstations. Let's take a look at a typical server and we'll show you what it's all about. Okay, let's take a look at what a typical server uh, looks like. Uh, it's basically a very heavy duty PC with heavy duty components. Uh, this also has four hard drives, uh, all in what's called a RAID configuration. Each one of those hard drives uh, is redundant to each other, and in the event of a failure, the machine continues to run. Uh, it alerts the IT department that there is a failure, and we can then do a hot swap of that hard drive to get that machine right back in service uh, without uh, losing any time. Uh, again, these servers need to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are all on, on uh, clean, uh, uninterruptible power, uh, and they, um, they're very reliable. Now on to connectivity. How do all these components connect together? Okay, This is our network rack right here. And what you see right here is the top part of our rack, each one of these connections here goes out to a network connection somewhere in this building. We also have a WAN here where we're connected to the Public Works Garage over on uh, East Lancaster Avenue. Uh, each one of these blue wires then comes down and connects to a network switch. Okay, And then those switches are connected to the servers. These switches are basically the gateways that allow all of the PCs of the building to talk together. Okay, so this is our network rack. Down here is some specialized equipment. We have our video server uh, for our video system in the building. We also have a key scan system in the building where we can uh, program access cards in and out of the building. So there's a lot of components here basically keep the building running smoothly every day. Now the white rack here is our telephone system. All right, as you can see, we have multiple telephone connections all throughout the building, all connected through the patch panel at the top to the process equipment down here on the bottom. Okay? The telephone system in the building is maintained by the information technology department, okay? and also our telephone system is extended over to the township garage over in East Lancaster Avenue. So you can basically dial here to the township building and then be connected right over to the garage. Um, the components for the telephone system are on the bottom and all the connectivity out to the phone jacks in the building are up top. Well that about wraps it up here for your quick look at the inside workings of the information technology department. We hope you enjoyed it and now we're going to pass it back to Jim. Thanks Steve. Next up we have our community spotlight feature. During this segment we will hear from Susan Shapiro who tells us about the Wayne Senior Center and all it has to offer. Hi. I'm Susan Shapiro, the Executive Director of the Wayne Senior Center, and I'm here today to tell you about the Senior Center. The Senior Center has been in Radnor uh, since 1975, actually. We've been incorporated and in this building uh, since 1980. Uh, we, have, we serve now two generations. We have people coming in who are 60 plus and then we have a lot of people too who are coming in that are 80 plus so we make a real effort to uh, plan our programs and activities and ideas uh, knowing that we have two generations here two generations i might say who do very well together if you decide you'd like to come visit the senior center you'll find a myriad of things to do here's what you won't find though you won't find people in rocking chairs with nothing to do. And that's kind of been a misnomer about senior centers um, all over the country for a long time. 
Our senior center is very, very active. We have many exercise classes. We have a, a functional fitness class, and we have a Tai Chi class and a yoga class. We're starting a circuit training class uh, in our um, fitness center. Our fitness center um, is another wonderful, wonderful um, asset that we have for uh, people. That <clears throat> people join the fitness center. We have. Uh, trainers who train people to use our equipment and that has been a very very popular thing and I would invite anybody who's watching today to come in and look at our equipment and meet one of our trainers our trainers are trained to work with older adults um, and will walk with you every step of the way to get you comfortable on our machines and feeling great we also have a, what we call our Ask a Nurse uh, program every Monday, um, and people can come in and chat with our nurse, get their um, blood pressure taken. A lot of times doctors will recommend that. We are also lucky enough to have a relationship with um, Dunwoody Village and La Maison, where we have uh, three classes a week in the warm water. All of those classes are also led by senior trainers who um, work with older adults all the time, and that's a wonderful, wonderful class to take. It's all done to music, so you hardly even know you're exercising. We also have line dancing, and, um, and that's a great way to exercise. One of the nicest things about this senior center is uh, the way everybody cares for each other. Um, we have... It, it's just a wonderful feeling of friendship and fellowship as soon as you walk through the door. I've had some people say to me, boy, as soon as I walk through the door, no matter what else has happened during the day, I feel a whole lot better being here. Um, and people come for lots of things. They may come just to use our fitness center, or they might come to play a game of bridge, or pinochle, or poker. Um, we also do a lot of education. We have educational speakers here who talk about a lot of health issues, um, scam issues, things that people really, really need to know about. Our computer lab is a busy place. Our, in our computer lab, people learn everything from the very, very basics of how to use a mouse uh, to, to get around on the computer, to Excel classes and uh, additional word classes. Um, we give a lot of individual attention in our uh, computer classes so if there's anybody out there who is finally ready to learn how to use the computer this is a great place to come one of the things our volunteers uh, do for us is we have a wonderful group of volunteers from AARP who help people uh, prepare their income tax um, that can be a very, very stressful thing. Our volunteers are trained each and every year on the newest of laws, and uh, they will prepare those taxes for free. Um, so that's something that, when tax time comes around, a lot of people like to know about. Another really fun thing that we do here at the Senior Center is we sponsor trips. Um, we have about two a month. Um, we go anywhere from New York City to, to see a play, to Atlantic City to play, or uh, to theaters uh, in the area. Uh, you can find out more about our trips by either uh, getting a copy of our newsletter or checking out our website, or just walking in the door. We can even take you grocery shopping if you need to. Um, there are some people who have difficulty who, for whatever reason, um, have some transportation issues. Either they've decided not to drive or they don't want to drive in the kind of traffic that we have sometimes. So every Wednesday, if uh, anybody needs grocery shopping, we can do that here from, from the Senior Center. We'll even teach you how to sew. We have a wonderful sewing class where people are learning to make all kinds of things. People who have perhaps never done that before. Um, and it's, it, sometimes it's a good way even just to finish a project that you might have started years ago. Another service we have here at the Senior Center is that we serve lunch every day, Monday through Friday. It's a hot lunch every day, and it's nutritionally balanced. And the nice thing is, if you're eating alone at, eating alone at home, you can eat with friends when you're here at the Senior Center. This past year, we were lucky enough to get a wonderful grant from the state of Pennsylvania to put in our new center cafe. 
we are able to offer coffee and donuts and goodies and that kind of thing. But the other part of the grant allows us to have meals that people can take home for dinner. Uh, these meals are available. They are, they are freshly frozen. They're very tasty and from all reports everybody loves them. We have an awful lot going on here at the Senior Center. I would invite anybody who's listening to please come and check us out. Don't be afraid. Don't say I would never go to a Senior Center because I don't want to be with all those seniors. You'll be really surprised when you come in and you find out what a really great place that this is and you'll probably meet some people that you haven't seen in a long time too. Thanks Susan. For our next segment we hear from Doug Meter of the engineering department who takes us out to a current job site to explain what is happening. My name is Doug Meter. I work in the Radnor Township engineering department. We're going to show you a job site. This particular job site is in both Tredifferent and Radnor Townships. The owner went through land development and they have a grading permit and a building permit. The contractor is currently working on caissons and grading the site. The site will have two large underground stormwater management systems and six rain gardens. The engineering department monitors the compliance with approved plans, maintenance of erosion controls, along with inspecting site improvements. Thanks, Doug. Up next, we hear from Ray Daly of the Community Development Department, who explains to us about his job as a code official. My name is Ray Daly. I'm a code official for Radnor Township. I would like to explain my job as a code official and tell you some of my duties in the Community Development Department. As code officials, Mr. Miller and I perform plan review and field inspections for construction projects in Radnor Township. The township has approximately 600 to 800 open working permits at any given time. The construction documents must be reviewed for code compliance in accordance with Act 45 of the State of Pennsylvania. We are currently following the 2009 ICC family of codes. The code cycle changes every three years to keep up with updates in the building and changes with new construction prod products. Mr. Miller and I also are involved in meetings with architects, engineers, builders, and residents for all the projects planned or ongoing within the township. Pennsylvania Act 45 requires code officials to be ICC certified and PA licensed in all disciplines in which they perform their duties. Both Mr. Miller and I are certified to perform the following inspections. Residential and commercial plan review and building inspections. Residential and commercial mechanical plan review and inspections. Residential and commercial plumbing plan review and inspections. Residential commercial fuel gas plan review and inspections, residential and commercial energy plan review and inspections, commercial accessibility plan review and inspections, property maintenance and housing inspections. We also hold fire inspector certification one and hazardous materials training. In the upcoming weeks, both Mr. Miller and I would like to inform you of the other duties and responsibility as Township Code officials. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Finally, for the last segment of this episode of Radnor 411, we'll hear from Sergeant Joe Pinto of the Radnor Township Police Department, who tells us about all the extras the police department can offer you. Hi. My name is Joe Pinto. I'm a sergeant with the Radnor Township Police Department and I've been employed with the department for over 15 years now. And I'm here to talk to you tonight about some of the extra things that your police department provides to you as being members of the community. One of the first things we do 
is we provide a service of opening your car should you ever lock your keys in it and unable to get inside. Whether your child or your dog or just your groceries are inside, we have a tool which is called the Big Easy. It allows us to come to get into any access any vehicle without it causing any damage to your car. We can quickly get in and get you on your way as fast as possible. Um, all we ask is that you sign a uh, waiver to the car for some minor scratches that may occur on the doorway, and we run a record check to make sure that in fact it is your vehicle. Second thing we do um, as a quality of life issues for the residents and the business owners is uh, we do vacant house checks and business checks. Vacant house checks is when you go on vacation, you can contact the police department or you can go online and register your home is going to be vacant and the dates is going to be vacant and the police will do a, a walk around your house on a daily basis checking to make sure that you remember to lock all your doors and windows. We also record emergency contact information so should an emergency arise we can get a hold of you, tell you what's going on and have you come home and rectify the situation as, as quickly and as readily as possible. At night in the Wayne, especially in the Wayne business block, but in all the businesses throughout the township, we actually get out on foot and do a foot patrol of the, house, uh, the businesses where we visually inspect them, make sure there's no damage to the windows, any graffiti or, or anything like that. We also actually pull the doors, make sure your business is locked and secure. There's records kept in the township and in our computer system as well. So if we do find an open door or something is wrong or damaged, we can contact the owner or his designate and they can come out and we can address the issue that needs to be addressed. The other thing that we do, and, and quite frankly, one of, one of the favorite things of mine that we do with it's a quality of life issue, is the school visits. We go into the schools throughout the day, um, and we visit with staff and teachers and, and the students themselves. And this is everything from the little kids in the preschool and the kindergartens all the way up to and including the college campuses. Um, in the preschools, we've gone in and, and, and we read, and we read stories to them, and we answer questions, and we do an officer friendly up to and including the high school and the college kids where we'll go in and we'll do a presentation on underage drinking, DUI, and the ramifications if you're caught doing either of those two things. Second thing that coincides with the school visits is that we are available for community talks. If your community organization, your neighborhood group, or anything like that has an issue that can be addressed by the police department of the township, they can make a request through the lieutenant, tell them what they're looking for, um, It'll be assigned to an officer. He will do his research, look into it, and he'll respond to your community area or wherever the designated location is and, and speak to you on that topic and answer any questions that, that arise or develop throughout the course of the discussion. These are just some of the many things that we do um, throughout the township beside answering your calls for emergency service, whether it be an accident or ambulance calls or, or an actual crime being committed. Okay, and once again, I am Sergeant Joe Pinto with the Radnor Police Department. For more information, you can look us up online at radnor.com or feel free to contact us directly to the police station at area code 610-688-0503 between the hours of 8 and 4, 8 and 4, Monday through Friday. And if it's an emergency, don't hesitate to dial 911. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. Please be sure to tune in to future episodes of Radnor 411. We will catch up on all that is current in Radnor Township. Thanks for watching, and remember, RTV is your information station.